So we talked about um, the three characteristics. There's actually a fourth that has to do with frequency response, but we'll talk about that later, later in the quarter. Um, we've talked about three characteristics that we like to see in an ideal op amp, or a good op amp, I should say. Um, and that is having a high RN, ideally infinite, but you can't really get infinite uh, RN um, in real life. Uh, a zero R out, can't really get that in real life either. Um, and an infinite gain. You can't get any of these, but to make a good op amp, you try to get uh, as large a RN and a larger gain as you can, and as small a R out as you can. And the low R out is important because of feedback. Op amps are used with feedback, as you've seen in 211, um, you know, where you add some resistors or capacitors or in inductors or something around um, and uh, connect up the output back to the input of the op amp. Um, you need this, this high R in and this low R out for, for you to be able to do that. Uh, you can use an op amp just as a comparator, uh, and a comparator doesn't use feedback. A comparator just gives you a higher load, depending if the non-inverting input is greater than the inverting input. Um, and in that case, you really don't care about the R out um, in most cases. So let's see. So we've got our goals. These are our goals. These are our goals. These are our goals. Um, let's look at a um, circuit that we looked at in an earlier video called the common emitter amplifier. And you'll see some form of this, or a common source amplifier if you're using a MOSFET. You'll see some form of this uh, in, in almost all of the amplifiers we, we use this quarter. Um, we'll, we'll look at other... Um, single transistor amplifiers, but this one right here, this one, uh, it gives you a really solid gain. So it's uh, often quite integral in a lot of the voltage amplifiers that we build this quarter. And what happens is, is transistor, uh, if you give it a voltage in, a transistor produces a current. Its output is a current. So it's a voltage in current output device. Um, the transistor itself does not set the voltage at this node. The, the, all the transistor does is uh, generate a current. To get a voltage at this node, you need to throw that voltage across a resistor. And then when you throw the voltage across the resistor, you get your VDD minus whatever current you have times your R. So then when you change the current, your V out moves. So it's the resistor that generates this V out. The transistor only generates current. Okay. So let me actually move this off to the side. I'll keep this picture actually. So, um, so we have this as kind of a core component, okay? And this gives you good gain, okay? So that's that's great. That gives us some some good gain. We'll put a check mark there. Well, let's let's check this out. Let's say I connect this to another circuit, like I did in the first video. And that circuit pulls some current. Question is, where does that current come from? That current comes from the supply and out this way. And if the current goes through the resistor, then it's going to change V out. V out will change. So I'll give you a second here. Uh, which one of these characteristics is this demonstrating or or demonstrating that it doesn't satisfy okay um, the whole goal of 
R out being zero is that when you pull current, this voltage does not change. And because it does change, that shows you that this circuit right here has a large R out. So this has a large R out and doesn't satisfy um, doesn't satisfy one of our goals for a good op amp. So what we do, let me move this one out too. I'll keep this. Um, so our it violates one of our goals for for our op amp. So this is not a good op amp. V out changes, and so it's not a good op amp. So we need to, we, we've got, we need this to use this kind of amplifier to get some good gain, but um, unfortunately, this doesn't give us our low R out. So it turns out, if you remember from, if you remember from the Echo Lab. And for those of you that didn't have me, uh, there's this other circuit that you used. You did this. Okay. Turns out um, there there is some IB right here, but it turns out this IB uh, is pretty constant. So um, the problem here was when some current was being pulled by a circuit that you connected it up to, um, that the current out of here changed and therefore moved V out. But it turns out since since this current, the, the current coming out of here gets divided by beta when it comes into the, approximately divided by beta when it comes into the base, it actually doesn't change very much. And so now, if you connect this circuit right here, if, if you remember from the naming video, this is a common uh, emitter. And connect it up to, if you look at this, V ins on the base, V outs on the emitter. So if you connect it up to a common collector, um, and if you remember what a common collector does, it gave you approximately a VBE on drop right here. So whatever voltage was coming out here, this would be V minus VBE on. So when V moved, this node will also move. So this is actually a buffer. So a common collector also equals a buffer. There's a level shift. There's a level shift of VBE on. So this node is VBE on lower than this node. So it's also called a level shifter. And, and now let's look at what happens. Now let's say this, uh, so you've just added this stage. So now let's say uh, you, this circuit right here pulls some current. What happens is this current is coming, now it's coming through your transistor and coming out this way. You say, well, wait a minute, it's still pulling current. That means this node is going to move. But what happens is, is that um, this says, oh, I need to conduct some more current. So it changes its VBE just a little bit. So it changes VBE just a little bit. And the reason why it only has to change a little bit is remember that the current equation for a BJT is exponential. So changing VBE exponentially changes the current through the transistor. And so just a very small change here allows, uh, can supply almost any current your next circuit might need. And so since this doesn't change very much to, to provide extra current, uh, v out doesn't move very much right here, um, and uh, V out won't move. It'll move just a little bit, 
um, but won't move much. Now you can see that this can be considered a low R out. And you notice that the voltage at this node, it's shifted down, but this is still going to move the same amount as this side. It's just going to be about a VB on drop uh, lower. And so it gives you the same output here, or the same movement on the output here as is on this wire, um, just shifted down. And when another circuit asks for current, then um, this node, the voltage at this node doesn't change very much. So that's considered a low R out. So, uh, okay, so now we've got, we've got good gain from this stage. Remember, this changes its current exponentially, and when it throws an exponential change in current across the resistor, V out moves a lot. V out moves exponentially. So this gives you good gain. And now this one, this protects the circuit by pulling a pretty constant, small amount of current um, from this circuit, and then uh, being able to provide as much current as the next circuit needs, um, uh, it asks for. Um, and I'm going to do uh, the, well, no, I'll keep going. OK, so now we've got a common emitter and a common collector. Um, we have actually one more stage. If you remember, an ideal op amp looks like this. It has a differential input. And this, this only has one input. So let's do, let's save this. And let's do our final version over here. Uh, just missing one piece, that differential input. So how to do it. Actually, let's move both of these over. Sorry for the house, housekeeping while I'm doing the video. OK, so, so now we've got our, our gain and our low R out, but we don't have our differential input right here. So, turns out you've already seen you've already seen that circuit. You've, you've actually seen both of these. This was your RTL inverter, and this was just on the output of your of your, the Peckle um, Peckle circuit. Turns out that um, a to get a differential input. This circuit should look familiar too. Um, the inputs, the inputs. you put this circuit out in front of your gain stage. Okay, and if you, uh, it's, this should look familiar, it's, it's a Peckle circuit, and everything you did in the lab where you built a Peckle circuit is exactly what we're going to do when we get to, uh, we'll have pretty much a lab that looks a lot like Peckle, but it's going to be, um, you're going to be in the amplification region instead of, so for the, for the PECL you did in lab, you were looking here and here for 307, a 1 or a 0. But now in, in the lab, uh, we'll use the same circuit, but we'll be looking at this region right here, which in my textbook was called the amplification region. And this, although it's the same circuit as a PECL, in 308, we call it a differential pair. And so this is the main, this is pretty much the story of the quarter. And we're going to look at the math. For first, we'll look at math for these two stages right here. 
Um, this is this is a three stage op amp. Sometimes you can do it if if the if the pickle, I should say, if the diff pair has enough gain, then sometimes you don't need this gain stage, and then you can just go uh, diff pair to um, your common collector. But if you want more gain, then you need to add a stage here. Remember that uh, gains. If you have uh, amplifier A1 going into A2, sorry, this is really hard to read, then your total gain is A1 times A2. So in this case, your differential pair will have some gain, your common emitter will have some gain, they multiply. Um, this is a buffer, so its gain is 1. So you'll have the gain of the differential pair times the gain of the common emitter times the gain of the common collector, which is 1 for this whole uh, amplifier. Um, so, and we'll, we'll do the math for uh, these two circuits over here, and then we'll move into the math for the diff pair, um, and then we'll look at some ways to make all of these circuits better. Um, and this is called, just one last comment on here, I know the video is getting long. Uh, this is, uh, again, called a three-stage uh, three stage op amp and each stage has a name this is the input stage it gives you the differential input and it gives you a high R in um, and then this is the gain stage it gives you the gain and then this is called the output stage and its entire job is just to give a low R out. In other words, be able to provide current to whatever circuit it's connected to and not change its V out. 